This video includes footage of three of our look mentors exploring a coffee roastery by touch and talking directly to the camera while seated in front of an exposed brick wall. Hi, I'm Chris. I am a school teacher for children with special educational needs and I have retinitis pigmentosa. I was diagnosed with this condition when I was eight, having ran into a glass door and then also walking into a giant container whilst at night. And uh, it kind of shocked my parents, so we had to go to the opticians and that's where I was diagnosed. Uh, after that, it wasn't too much of a challenge for me. I sort of knew about the condition, but it, it didn't really have much of an effect on my life. Uh, at that time, sport was a real important part of my life. So hockey was my main sport and that was sort of where I got my confidence and where I felt most comfortable. And it wasn't until I was about 12 or 13 where um, my sight deteriorated again as a result of the RP that um, it, it, it affected my hockey, which, is, <laughs> which um, really sort of upset me and caused me to become quite angry and frustrated. So if I ever made a mistake when I was playing, it would result in me hitting my stick on the floor and just almost screaming out in fury. And I think I didn't really understand what it meant for the sight condition. I hadn't really clicked that certain things like playing in the summer that I'd be the only one having to cover my eyes when the sun was out or just not really seeing things, which it sounds silly, but I didn't really have an understanding of my sight condition. And as it got progressively worse later into my teens, I, I, I actually Googled and looked on Wikipedia. I searched retinitis pigmentosa because I, I knew about the condition. I knew it affected my sight, but I didn't really understand the, the ultimate um, issue with it. I didn't realize that at some point I could lose all of my sight and it was beneficial to me to understand it at that age because the year after I'd have to study for my GCSEs. And at that point, I, re I realized that I need to put the things in place. Previously at school, um, I'd be supported by a teacher for vision impaired children and young people, but I, I didn't really engage with it. So they sort of come in, do the usual tests, and I just sort of you know, dismiss it and be like, no, I'm fine. And until I had that realization, had that understanding of what this condition meant, I, I knew at that point I needed to have everything in place. So that's where I started to advocate for myself. I informed all the teachers I had that I needed extra support. I needed um, things enlarged. I needed different squared paper and maths and I needed to sit at the front of the class. And I sort of allowed the conditions to sort of become part of my identity and not something that I would ignore and not have as myself. So. Uh, went through into college, having done my GCSEs, having had the support, the extra time to, to get the GCSEs I need to get to college. And from my sort of confidence in advocating for myself when I was in college, I started to have cane training and braille because I, I wanted to go to university and I, I didn't have the skills to be as independent as I wanted to. I didn't want to turn up to uni as some incapable vision impaired person because that just didn't seem right to me. So I got over my fear of using a cane and um, just trained with it. I remember one time training at college and we thought it was gonna be a quiet corridor. And as we go down, there's people coming out of an exam. And for me, it was horrendous. It was a horrible feeling. I, my stomach was just cramping up and I was like, oh my God, this is rubbish. I don't want to be here. But, you know, <laughs> I got through that corridor and sort of got over it and um, learned how to use a cane. So it meant I could do things independently at night. Uh, and then uh, as I went on to university, the summer before the September where I was going to start, I spent a week where I didn't have anyone at home. So I was teaching myself to cook, do washing, do all these essential things. So when I came to uni, I was actually more capable than most of the people that didn't have vision impairments because 
they didn't really have that have that thought um, to to be prepared. So I was like, oh, oh all right, okay, you, I, I can do all these things. This is good. Um, so yeah, it was it it really helped in terms of um, my sight loss. And I went through uni. I didn't really use a cane only at night, which is always funny when people be like, why are you holding on to that person or what, what's that stick you've got? They, they really didn't get it. And it was always something I'd have to explain and people were just generally very accepting. They didn't <laughs> find it much of an issue. And then as I left uni, I started to realize that I'd have to use my cane day to day because during my time, I, my sight started to deteriorate whilst I was at uni and I knew that the cane would have, I'd have to use it just to reduce any awkwardness and allow myself to be more independent and just to cut out all the awkwardness of going into a shop and, you know, blindly wandering around and trying to find someone because as soon as you had the cane, people were just like, do you need any help? Which is, <laughs> which I did. So, um, that was, um, yeah, important for me and I think, Accepting the sight loss just I don't know, allowed me to challenge myself and I think you go through a certain phase of putting obstacles in front of your way because you're like, oh, I'm vision impaired, I can't do that. But you, you learn that everybody around you will try and do that for you. And then, unless you're willing to challenge them and challenge yourself and be like, yeah, of course I can do this, then it's not going to get any better. You're not going to be able to do the things you want to. Having studied and accepted more of my sight loss, I decided to train as a teacher, which is what I am now. And I just really made sure it was exactly how I needed it to be. People are very um, welcoming. And I think the decision to go towards special educational needs where people are all for inclusivity uh, has really um, supported me. Just, it's not as comfortable. And yeah. when we had that, we could just both... At this moment in time, my sight has stayed the same, so I use a cane most of the time. don't have any central vision, but I manage to do everything day to day. And having had discussions with other VI people recently, when people ask, how do you do it? Like, how do you live with a vision impairment? You, you kind of forget the things that, you've, that you do, because it's just part of you now. Although, you know, there might be a point where you have lost all your sight or when I fight, like if my sight goes, you have the opportunity within the vision impaired community to find people who have lost all of their sight and they're still doing amazing things. And I think that what inspires me that you don't need to limit yourself. You can always find a way and yeah, there's lots of opportunities, especially in sport. When I was at uni, I sort of, that's when I really embraced my sight loss and I wanted to find out and find as many other people who were vision impaired as possible. I had started playing cricket and blind cricket and partially sighted football um, when I was 16 after I decided to stop playing hockey. And as part of this, I found out about Sight Village, which is sort of I've heard it's like a, the, the blind guy convention for the UK. And the, it was in Birmingham, so it meant I could use the train and find my own way there, which again, I was trying to challenge myself and sort of push my vision impairment to, to the limit and get myself out of um, my comfort zone. And as I'm sort of wandering around uh, chatting to people, I was t talking to someone at Guide Dogs and I was saying I really want to sort of support people to um, overcome the challenges of their sight loss because school hadn't been great until I started to advocate for myself and I didn't want other children to go through that. It was, it's, it, although it brought me to where I am with my resilience, I, I think it's an unnecessary thing. And with the amount of children staying in mainstream with vision impairments, I thought was important. So the person at Guide Dogs directed me towards Look UK. So I wandered down the aisle at Sight Village and started chatting to Charlotte, who is the CEO of Look. And from there, we, she, I think, got my email and just, I think, 
A couple of months later, we, I was invited to do some work at New College, so to talk some, to some other vision impaired um, children there. And from there, I've done lots of different things to look. I was trained as a mentor. I've, I think I've mentored maybe six or seven children and young people over the past five years. Uh, done look fest with them, been to conventions, had the privilege of working with Look for a year before I did my teacher training. And I'm always excited whenever I can help Look out because the opportunities to grow as a person and to network with other vision impaired people are so valuable. And the impressive, uh, just the impressive activities and things that other VI people are doing are um, yeah, always inspirational and always sort of challenging me that there are no limits to my vision impairment. Mentoring benefits, I think, both sides. So if you're wanting to become a mentor, it's, it, it will allow you to speak about your vision impairment in a more open and succinct way. And you may not feel like your vision impairment or your experiences are as important or as challenging as someone else that may be mentoring, but that will be the experience with someone else. You don't realize how people are feeling or what they're going to go through. So offering your experience to someone Will allow well it, it just allows someone else to speak about it because they, they understand what you have gone through and no matter the challenge that you no matter the challenges however you feel how small they are there will always be someone that can benefit and empathize from 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 that experience we all have different journeys we're all on the different sight loss journeys um, but be willing to share it and you, you may be able to help someone else and gain, give someone the confidence to, you know, use a cane or use a screen reader or just even ask for help in school. It's such a small thing because as you grow up with your sight loss, you're always asking for help and you always feel a bit, I don't know, sometimes a bit immature, but if you don't ask questions, you're never going to grow. And once you're at a point to share these experiences, then that's an amazing space to be. So whatever you've gone through, just think about your younger self, think about the other person that may be going through it. And if you can offer them just a small shred of advice or give them a small story from where something has gone on in terms of your vision impairment, that will, that will benefit them more than you realize. So my experience where- I... With mentoring, I've had many different mentees and I think the biggest impact I've had was sitting around a table during a look event at New College Worcester. And we were just talking openly about what it's like to be vision impaired, the, the highs, the lows, the awkward situations, the perks, just everything that you need to know going to this vision impaired world. It is a little different as, as much as we want to be as typical as everyone else. We, we, there are, I think things are going to be different and it's, it's accepting that both for the, the good and the bad things. So we we're just chatting. I was chatting to I think three or four um, mentees of various different mentors and we were just talking and they were sharing their lows. I was sharing my experiences and um, just showing them and even showing them how to make their phone more accessible. I think having that one-to-one, -one, well, not one -to -one, those group conversations with, with people who are ha going to go through the same experiences um, is just so important. And you, you sometimes don't realise the effect you have on uh, your mentee. I, think I have had a mentee who I haven't met in person. Um, we've done, we've 
been uh, partnered together for over a year now and we've had a few Zoom conversations and you, in, until they have the conversation outside talking to someone at Look, I, I didn't realise the impact I, I had and they are now mm, more confident and accepting of their VI having spoken to me. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't feel like I did anything because you were just there just talking about your vision impairment, which is just what you normally do with other vision impaired people. But when you're speaking to someone that has no idea and to see yourself and what you've done as a, as a vision impaired person, you're very humble to it because you've just got on. You've gone like, this is what I want to do, I'm gonna go do it. And you don't realize how pe how important that is to people you don't you don't yeah you don't you don't realize and um i think that's what making what makes mentoring so special is the connections you have the things that you can change in someone's lives even if it's not directly it's just indirectly the constant conversations that sort of feeding through that it will it will be okay you will have challenges but it will always be a positive end at, at some point. I'd say from a technology side it's a good time to have a vision impairment. There's a lot of stuff out there to support you whether that is screen readers, magnifiers and f some products in particular, things that like Apple make which has inbuilt accessibility. It, it's, it's just amazing to have all of these uh, these choices because everyone works differently. And I think when I first started using technology, I would use just an iPad and interact with the screen um, just by zooming in and using a Bluetooth uh, keyboard to get around it. And it was, it, yeah, I didn't, I, again, I just didn't realise because I would just be struggling with my phone and then I started playing around and found accessibility and I was like, oh my God, I can change the colours, I can have white on black and I can actually see it and I can zoom in, this is amazing. And then as I moved on towards uh, like university and eventually employment, that's when I sort of was introduced more towards the um, things like Fusion or JAWS. So I was able to use a magnifier and speech so I'm actually getting as much information as I possibly can and I think having a I use a 32 inch monitor at work so it's if I'm zoomed in by like times 12 or 14 at least there's enough things on on the screen to see um, although the real apparently according to people who have got a typical sight there <laughs> apparently all the words and things look like a uh, crinkle cut chips when it's zoomed in but obviously I can't see that and it's it I think things have always are always going to improve. At Site Village recently, I saw uh, a couple of canes that are using like the sonar technology, and I think that will always support people. Um, although you can't go wrong with a cane, I don't, I don't know if they'll ever um, get to a point where they don't use that form of technology. And also use a just a small handheld magnifier as well if I need to do any reading in school, if there's any print. There is more and more technology coming out. Uh, I think from Braille side, I think that that's come on a lot. Um, although I haven't fully, I'm not a full Braille user yet, so that's something I'm learning to sort of prepare myself. Um, but I think like I said, the technology is always keeping vision impaired people um, in the world and whether it's the simple um, accessibility settings on phones that I think everyone can have access to and means they can use things like social media or even games consoles. Um, games companies are becoming more accessible, so whether it's the games like Last of Us or Spider-Man, uh, I know the latest PlayStation 5 has got controllers that have different vibrations so it lets you know what's um, going on on screen so you can access a game like everybody else, which I think is um, amazing uh, to have. Look, supporting visually impaired young people to thrive. www.look-uk.org